Welcome back to the OHL tonight on TV Kojiko. This week in general for the season, the Spitfires are celebrating their 40th anniversary. In particular this week, they are celebrating the decade of 1985 to 1995. The face next to me is a familiar one. Former captain with the Windsor Spitfires, Bill Bowler, who the Spitfires are paying tribute to you and a couple others against the Sarnia Sting. Tell us a little bit of how this night came together. Well, uh, I guess 15, 20 years ago, I was a member of this hockey club and now with Steve Horn and uh, Spitfire ownership and uh, have done a f remarkable job here of trying to create an alumni and um, you know give back to the past so uh, I got the call and anytime you can be a part of uh, the Windsor Spitfires and what they're trying to do I obviously uh, welcome that. What do you remember most during your time uh, in Windsor during those years in the early 90s? Uh, again we talk so much I'm I've moved my family down here I, I had four excellent years uh, as a young man here in Windsor I played with you know, a, but too many good players to mention and had excellent coaching in that. But um, honestly, it's the friendships you build and the times away from the rink that, you know, when people ask me about it, I always have good stories about that. I don't talk about many of my uh, assists, goals or wins. It's always about all the fun you had away from the rink on bus trips and whatnot. So uh, those four years, again, were, were a real special time in my life. And uh, from my billet family, Peter and Louise Harp, who I still keep in contact with or who, who are here tonight, it's just... Uh, a great time, and like I said, any time you get welcome back to this program, it's uh, it's an honor. And after those, before those four years when you came over, Spitfires won an OHL championship in 1988. Everybody knows how great that team was. As a player's perspective, did you feel any more pressure that was added to that young team in the early 90s coming off of an OHL championship just a few years before? And, and did you feel expectations were high because of the success the Spitfires had shortly before you arrived? Yeah, you again, you look at the past and the people that have played before you and there's no question you wanted to to show well and prove you belong and you know keep that tradition going and there's no question guys like Adam Graves and uh, Tom Webster people that have won championships here you try to be do your job to be a part of that but as you know in team sports it's it's uh, it's hard to win so you know, I give a ton of credit to people that find a way to win championships. And, um, you know, we had a few good t few good years that we had chances maybe to, to have some success. Unfortunately, I wasn't a member of a, a championship team, but um, there's no question you try to live up to the names before you. Who are some of the players on that team that you still keep in touch with today? Um, you know, you wish you could stay in touch with a lot of your teammates. Unfortunately, uh, life gets in the way. You get older and families and kids. But um, obviously, uh, Ed Jovanovski, who's going to be recognized here uh, this year, um, uh, David Pluck. Uh, there's, a, there's a number of guys that you still uh, around the community. Um, but it, like I said, I, I wish you could stay in touch with everyone, but it's impossible. But uh, I'm around the game enough that I, I see a lot of my old teammates. Well, what kind of teammate was Todd Warner? Well, there you go. See, I forgot Todd. Uh, Todd was an excellent teammate. What else could you say? He's an excellent broadcaster now. But no, Todd was obviously a talented player uh, in his day. And uh, when I first came here, he was uh, welcomed all the, the, the new guys and especially myself. So uh, phenomenal skater, uh, great knack around the net and uh, obviously a good guy and enjoyed his company away from the rink. And after your playing days, you went on to coach. You're still coaching right now at Junior B with the LaSalle Vipers. Did you know you want to become a coach while you were still playing the game? No, no, to be honest. Uh, when, I, when I was playing back then, you'd, your whole focus was on hockey, or it was for me anyways, and um, you just loved playing the game so much. And then obviously when my uh, career came to an abrupt end, you know, you still had the passion and the competitive edge to stay in the sport. And I was fortunate enough that uh, Mr. Riolo and the Winter Spitfires welcomed me back in, in an assistant coach position. And I had two great years with the new ownership as well, with Bob and Warren and uh, Pete Dobrich at the time. So uh, real great uh, time learning there under those guys. And then uh, I, again, enjoy staying in the game. And that's why I work with uh, the Vipers. And as you know, some of these kids on this Spitfire team uh, uh, played with us last year, so that's rewarding as well. How much has the game changed from then when you, you're growing up and you're playing at that junior level to today? And, and do you try to coach a team the way you played the game, or, or is it totally different nowadays? Um, it's different. Um, obviously, the numbers back then, if you look at statistics and that, it's, it's a lot uh, more difficult to score. Um, 
But I, again, I blame coaching on that, and that, that's coaching in two ways. Coaching's excellent now. I think the video and the demand of the coaching position, it, it's, kids are well prepared. And then also the negative of that is I think uh, the systems are, it's too much. Um, it really is. I don't know if we uh, stagnate or uh, stunt the growth of hockey players today, and not just OHL level, but minor hockey. And um, I know when I played, uh, my coaches uh, allowed me to try to be the player that I was. They didn't, uh, I don't want to say change me. They tried to help my game, and I know they did. But uh, the way I played, they allowed me to do that, and I honestly credit them for allowing me to, to try to, to be that offensive player. And, um, but the game's just changed with shot blocking and, like I said, the video. It, it's, it's changed, you know, hopefully for the better. If you ask some old-timers, uh, they may not agree, but the game's differently, uh, definitely different. Final question, Bill, get you out of the, here on this. With, uh, your, in terms of playing with the Spitfires back in the early 90s, is there a goal or a game that really sticks out for you? Well, again, that's a hard question. Um, I wish I could say, yeah, when we won the championship or something, but no. And then, like I said, about goals and assists and... No, they, you know, it'd be, it would be those experiences back in the old Windsor Arena. And I guess if there's one story I like to share is they, they handed out uh, video cassettes or um, they weren't DVDs back then, but uh, <laughs> cassettes. And unfortunately, our, our fans didn't like the officiating. And before the game was over, the, the whole ice was littered with uh, videotapes. And uh, we actually played the last minute with debris all over the ice. Quite amusing. And, uh, but again, I could sit here for an hour and tell you all the funny stories back in Windsor Arena. Great time. I wish we did have the time. I appreciate you taking the time and joining us. It's former Windsor Spitfire captain Bill Bowler as the Spitfire celebrate their 40th anniversary this year. Much more to come on the OHL tonight on TV Coach Go.